Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to a very exciting video. Today I'm here wearing my Victober top, which can mean only one thing. Today I am delighted to announce the coming of the next Victober. For those of you who are newer around here and don't know what Victober is, Victober is my favourite thing of the year. Victober is a month-long readathon which takes place every October, which is all about reading Victorian literature. So Victober stands for Victorian October, and the whole point of this readathon is to read Victorian literature during the month of October. Victober has been going for quite a long time now. Um, this is actually the seventh Victober, which is really exciting. Victober started back in 2016, um, and then there were five hosts, um, me and Kate. How, who have been hosting it all the way through, um, along with three other wonderful booktubers. Um, and then over the years, we've had a few different hosts um, joining us, um, most recently Lucy the Reader. But Lucy's taken a bit of a step back from booktube lately. Um, so Kate, How and I are joined this year by three new hosts, which is very exciting. We're back up to five hosts for the first time since 2016. So joining us for Victober this year, we have three wonderful new hosts, Marissa from Blatantly Bookish, Petra Yu, and Roz from Scadley Dad about the books. These two booktubers are absolutely amazing. I highly recommend them all. Um, they all love Victorian literature and have wonderful videos on their channels about Victorian literature. So I'll link all their channels and their announcement videos down below and do please go and give them a watch if you haven't already. So before I get into talking about what the challenges are this year and what the group read is, let me tell you a bit about how to take part in Victober. So the only thing you need to do to take part in Victober is to read one piece of Victorian literature during the month of October. We do have challenges, but the only thing you need to do to actually you take part is to read something Victorian in October. So Victorian literature as a term refers to British or Irish literature, um, non-fiction or fiction, prose, poetry, plays, whatever you like, um, that was written or published during the reign of Queen Victoria. So that is 1837 to 1901. There are lots of ways to take part in Victober um, online. Either you can join the Goodreads group, which I'll link down below, or you can post on Booktube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, wherever you like with the hashtag Victober. Also, if you're on Booktube, do let us know down in the comments if if you have put up a TBR video and we'll go and watch it, don't link your TBR video in the comment or YouTube will delete it because YouTube doesn't like URLs in comments. But if you let me know, I would love to go and watch your TBRs because I am super excited to see everyone's TBRs for Victoria this year and I'm just very excited for Victoria. So let me get into the challenges. We have five challenges this year um, and a group read and I'm really excited about all of these. So Kate's challenge is to read a Victorian work with chronic illness or disability representation Presentation. My challenge is to read a Victorian Bildung's Roman or coming of age story. Marissa's challenge is to read a Victorian short story. Petra's challenge is to read a Victorian book and then to watch a screen adaptation of it. And Ross's challenge is to read a work of Victorian poetry, long or short. And then we also have a group read for the month. Um, so this is a book that we'll be hosting a read along of um, and that we'll all be reading. Um, and we're inviting all of you to read it with us. Um, and that is going to be The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. Um, so we're going to be reading reading two chapters a day from the 1st of October through to I think the 23rd of October. Um, the Mayor of Castlebridge is a really interesting book. Um, it's a really strong Thomas Hardy novel and I don't think it's a terrible place to start with Thomas Hardy because while there is a bit grim, there are grimmer books. Thomas Hardy has a big reputation for being very depressing and while that is a bit true and the Mayor of Castlebridge definitely has its dark moments, um, I do also think he is incredibly worth a read and a really fantastic writer who I just cannot recommend enough. The Mayor of Castlebridge is about a man called Michael Henchard and in the first chapter he gets very very drunk and sells his wife at a market. We then pick up with him again many many years later where he has reformed um, and made a better life for himself um, and then his past kind of catches up with him and everything goes on from there. It's a really fantastic read and one I highly recommend. I'm really excited to be rereading it. I think I've read it twice before um, but it'll be really nice to reread this for a third time this October. Please do come and join us for the group read. We'll have some discussion boards up for this on Goodreads so um, do come along and take part in that if you would like to. Moving on I want to give you some recommendations for my challenge and tell you about some wonderful Victorian builders romance and coming of age stories that you can read. All of the other hosts will have um, recommendations for their challenge on their videos on their channel so I'll link all of their announcement videos down below and you can go and get recommendations for their challenges but I'm going to be focusing in this video on recommendations for my challenge. So my challenge as I said is to read a Victorian builders romance or 
coming of age story. Every time I say the word builder's roman, I feel like I'm saying it differently. So I'm very sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it's just one of those words that I always stumble over. But there we go. The definition of a building's roman that I found online is a novel dealing with one person's formative years or spiritual education. Often I think of a builder's roman as a novel that follows a character from their childhood to their adulthood and that is primarily focused on one character. Um, I think that would probably be quite a strict definition of a builder's roman, however, um, and you're very welcome for this challenge to take it a little bit looser. Um, and if there is a book that you read which is a coming of age story, I think that is fine to use for this challenge. Um, there are some books I have to talk to you about today which are absolutely 100% builder's roman, where we follow a character from their childhood to their adulthood, and it's very much about their growth and their becoming the person that they're going to be. And then there are a few other recommendations I have which are a little bit looser, which are coming of age stories, but where we pick up with a character slightly later, or where we're maybe following um, multiple characters. But anyway, let's get into the recommendations. I'll start off with some ones which are like very strict builders romance, and then I'll move on to some slightly looser interpretations of my challenge later. For me, the absolute essential Victorian builders romance is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is a wonderful, fantastic novel, a brilliant place to start with Victorian literature, a wonderful read in general, and it follows the character of Jane Eyre from her childhood when she's about 10 years old, I think, um, through to her being the age of 18 or 19. We follow her school days, her becoming a governess, her starting a new job at Thornfield Hall, where everything is a bit strange and mysterious, and everything goes on from there. And it is really a book about Jane Eyre and her life and her kind of coming of age. I love Jane Eyre hugely. It is incredibly fantastic and amazing for so many different reasons, and I highly, highly recommend it. I won't go on for too long about it here, but it's one of my absolute favourites, and it is, would be a fantastic pick for this challenge. Or if you'd like to read some Charles Dickens, there are some wonderful Dickens books which would fit for this challenge. In David Copperfield, we follow David Copperfield literally from his birth um, into his adulthood. Um, and we're following David's coming of age, coming into the person that he's going to be, all the different characters he encounters on the way as he grows up, um, and him kind of coming into a person. I love David Copperfield. I think it's fantastic. Um, it is long, but uh, it is very accessible. And because it's in the first person, I think it's one of Dickens' slightly more accessible books. Definitely one I'd recommend for this challenge. And then I'd also recommend Great Expectations, which follows our narrator Pip from his childhood into his adulthood. Pip has a very impoverished upbringing, but one day he is told that he has great expectations and that he is going to be a gentleman and everything goes on from there. It's a wonderful read. Again, first person, one of Dickens's easier books to follow um, and definitely one that would work well for this challenge. Then there is one other Dickens book I wanted to recommend for this challenge, which is possibly a slightly looser Billy's Roman in that um, it is about multiple characters and I think there's only one character um, who it is a builder's romance for, if you see what I mean. Um, but that is Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens. Um, the main character in Dombey and Son is um, not Mr. Dombey and not Mr. Dombey's son, but Mr. Dombey's daughter. And Mr. Dombey runs a company called Dombey and Son. All he cares about is his company and pounding on his company to his son, which means he neglects his daughter Florence. And this book is about Florence Dombey. Um, we follow her from her childhood into her adulthood. Um, and I really think that this book is Florence's builder's romance in some way. However, there are an awful lot of subplots and other plots going on, and that's just like the one thread of the book. Um, so I would argue this would count for this challenge. This is an absolutely fantastic novel, would definitely be in my top five novels of all time, and I highly, highly recommend it. Another novelist who writes absolutely fantastic coming-of-age stories is Dinah Mullet Craig. I'd really like to recommend Olive, where we're following the character of Olive from her childhood into her adulthood. Olive is born with a curvature in her spine, which means she doesn't look like the other people around her, which means that she is treated differently from a very young age age and she is told um, that she is not going to get married, she's not going to have children. She's told by everyone around her that she's not going to be able to have a conventional female Victorian life and so she ends up doing something different with her life and training to be a painter. I Love Olive is one of my favourite books of all time. I'm thinking I might actually read it this October and it's a fantastic coming of age story, a wonderful villainous roman um, and I would really highly recommend it. Another book by the same author is John Halifax Gentleman. We're following a boy called Phineas um, and his friendship with a boy called John Halifax who he meets very early on in the book and we follow both Phineas and John Halifax from their childhoods into their adulthoods um, so really it's kind of like two builders romance in one um, because it is a coming of age story for both John and Phineas um, and it's a really fantastic read one I'd highly recommend I really like the way their relationship is done um, and the way this book looks at class and friendship as well and also both John Halifax Gentleman and 
Olive do have disability representation in too, so both of these would work both for my challenge and for Kate's challenge as well. Next I want to mention another Thomas Hardy novel. Maybe two Thomas Hardy novels in one month might be too much if you're already reading The Mayor of Castlebridge and this one is not a cheerful one, um, but I did want to mention Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy because this is a fantastic build this for a man following Jude um, from his childhood into his adulthood and his struggles to um, kind of be an academic when he is from a very impoverished background um, and his relationship with the people around him. It's fantastic, it's grim, it's depressing, but so, so good. I also wanted to quickly mention Alex Forbes of Howglen, which is a Scottish Victorian novel I read a few years ago and really enjoyed. This is another kind of dual coming of age story. We're following both Alex Forbes, the title character, and his school friend Annie, um, and how both of them grew up from childhood to adulthood. It's really worth a read and one I really enjoyed. Next, I have a few books by Elizabeth Gaskell that I wanted to mention. Um, some of these pick up with the characters slightly later on in life, um, but I still think that they are coming of age stories. Um, so first, I wanted to mention her novella, The Moreland Cottage, which is well worth a read. This is a bit of a builder's roman, a bit of a love story. We're following a girl called Maggie. We meet her in her childhood and we follow her through to her adulthood and her relationship with her family and another family who live nearby. I also wanted to mention her novella, A Dark Night's Work, which I love. Um, I can't precisely remember how old the main character is um, when we meet her at the start of the novel. I feel like she is in her mid-teens, but she might be in her later teens. But either way, we're following um, a father and daughter, their relationship, what happens when she falls in love for the first time, when everything in her life is going well, until one dark night, something changes. It's a really, really fantastic book, one I'd highly recommend. Um, and I did also want to mention Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. I think in the first chapter, our protagonist Molly is like 10 years old, but I'm pretty sure she's like 16 in the next chapter. So we don't meet her too early on in her childhood, um, but it is really Molly's coming of age story in Wives and Daughters. I love this novel so much. It's about our main character, Molly, what happens when her widowed father decides to marry again. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, it's fantastic, and I just cannot recommend it enough. I also wanted to mention Uncle Silas by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. This is a sensationalist novel and a gothic novel and a really fantastic one. And we meet our main character, Maud, at the start of the novel when she is 17 years old. This is, again is a slightly looser one, but I would argue that you could count this as a coming of age story because we are following Maud um, from when she's 17 as she kind of grows up and comes into her own um, and goes from being sort of meek and timid to kind of standing up for herself a bit more. I really love Uncle Silas, it's really worth a read. I was having an iron about whether to include the next two but I'm just going to say them because I think you could make an argument that they would count. Um, the first is Valette by Charlotte Bronte. In this book we're following Lucy Snow. We meet her at the beginning in her childhood and then we pick up with her later um, when she's a bit older and going to teach abroad and um, working in a school. And the book is basically about Lucy's life, her work, her loneliness, her unrequited love. It's a fantastic read, one of my favourite Bronte books, one I highly recommend. Um, and talking of the Brontes, my absolute favourite book by the Bronte sisters is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I was really umming and ahhing about whether or not you should include this because this book has so many characters and there isn't necessarily a central character maybe Heathcliff, but it's a bit fiddly. Um, however, you do actually follow a lot of characters in this book from their childhood into their adulthood, and arguably quite a lot of them never mature and stay pretty childish, but um, I do think there is a lot of like coming of age elements in this story. So I feel like if you want to stretch my challenge, and you're allowed to if you want to, then you probably could count Wuthering Heights. Then I have three novels to mention where we meet our main character kind of in their late teens, I think, um, but we do sort of follow their coming of age story and their coming into adult life, I suppose. So I thought they were worth mentioning. One is Jill by Amy Dillwyn. Jill is a wonderful, very different, um, a very unique, fantastic novel, which is about a young woman who um, is from a wealthy background, but is bored at home, so decides to run away and become a lady's maid, um, and we follow her life and her adventures, and it's very, very wonderful. I also wanted to recommend Hester, where we're following a young woman called Hester, as she moves to a new town with her mother, interacts with lots of new people, and begins to find her feet. And then I also wanted to mention Love and Mr. Lewisham by H.G. Wells, which is a book about a young man man um, who is training to be a teacher and um, about his relationship with the people around him um, and his kind of struggles between um, love and kind of ambition I suppose. It's a really fantastic read, one I definitely recommend. And then there are so so many more options that you could read for this challenge. So many other novels which would count as a building's romance, uh, but there are two other books which I did want to mention which 
I don't know if I'm recommending them because I really don't like either of them, um, but I do feel like they would fit into this challenge, so I wanted to mention them in case anyone is interested in picking them up because I felt like I ought to, even though they're not my favourites. Um, so one is Barry Lyndon by William Makepeace Thackeray. This is a book which is about a man called Barry Lyndon. We follow him from his childhood into his adulthood again. Um, all the scrapes he gets into on his adventures, he is not a nice man in any way. He is absolutely awful. Um, and he is supposed to be awful. Like, he's very much presented as a rogue. I found him quite frustrating to read about, which is one of the reasons why I didn't really get on with this book. Um, but I do feel like that is kind of the point. And while I don't like it very much, I guess if you're interested in reading it, you could read it for this challenge. So there we go. Um, and the other book which I wanted to mention, which is possibly my least favourite book of all time, is The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. I really, really don't get on with George Eliot's writing style. That's absolutely not for me. And The Mill on the Floss, I have so many issues with. However, it is kind of building through a plan because it is about a girl called Maggie. We follow her from her childhood into her adulthood, her relationship with the people around her, including her awful brother Tom and, and various other characters. Um, and it is kind of about her growing up, I suppose. If you like George Eliot and you want to read more by her, then The Mill and the Floss might be well worth a read. The main reason why I don't like it is a combination of the ending, I hate it, and the fact that I just don't get on with George Eliot's writing, which is entirely personal. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to stop going on about George Eliot because we could be here for a while. I'm really excited for this challenge. I've got lots of exciting plans for things I want to read for it myself. Please do head over to the other host videos to get recommendations for their challenges. Um, feel free, as I mentioned, to double up on challenges if you can find books that work for both. A couple of the books I've mentioned today would definitely work for Kate's challenge um, and there are also lots of adaptations of some of the books I've mentioned today so they'd work for Petra's as well and I have heard that Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning is both an epic poem and a coming of age story so I'm hoping to read that last October but I don't know very much about it we'll see before I go I did want to mention a few of the videos I've got planned for this October and um, I'm going to be vlogging October as I've done in previous years which I'm excited for I want to do a ranking of all the Victorian authors I've read I thought that might be quite fun. Um, I want to do a video about booktubers who like Victorian literature. I think I've done this before, but not for ages. And I've discovered so many new people in the last year or two um, who love Victorian literature. I also want to do a video all about Wilkie Collins, um, because Wilkie Collins is an author who I have a very hit and miss relationship with, uh, but I've read quite a lot of his books now. So I'd like to do a video about him. I also thought I might do a video about the Brontes because I haven't done a video about them for a while. And it's been a long time since I ranked their novels. And I feel like my opinions have slightly changed. I also have a few Dickens related things planned. More on that soon but I definitely want to do a video with like tips for reading Dickens and getting into Dickens. If I can find a, a free day in October I might try and do a vlog where I try and read like as many Victorian short stories and poems as possible in one day. Maybe do like one short story one poem and like alternate between them and like see how many I can read. I thought that might be quite fun so we'll see. I have a few of my like old staples potentially planned. You know five Victorian novels about a few themes. Um, I was thinking of maybe trying to do another feminist Victorian video because I haven't done one of them for a while. And then one idea I did have which I kind of need your help for was I was thinking it might be fun to do a very like specific recommendations for Victorian literature. You know like some booktubers do videos where they ask people to ask for recommendations for very specific kinds of books and I was thinking I could do one of those things but specifically for Victorian literature. Um, so basically if anyone has any like really specific queries or like really specific recommendations that they want for Victorian literature then leave them down in the comments and I can give people recommendations. I'm not sure how well this will work so I may or may not do this but um if anyone has any thoughts for that or any like things you would like recommendations for related to Victorian literature then do leave those down in the comments and as usual please do leave down in the comments any other video suggestions or ideas that you have for Victober. I'm really excited to be putting up lots of videos to do with Victorian literature in Victober. and that's all for now. I am super excited for another Victober. I can't believe this is the 7th of October, but that is very exciting. I'm really excited that Kate and I have three new hosts joining us, and I think the five of us are going to have a lot of fun discussing Victorian literature all month. I'm really excited to plan my TBR, and I've already started. It's already very long, um, and it's just going to be fun. So please do let me know down in the comments, are you taking part in Victober this year? What are you going to be reading? What are you thinking for all the challenges? Do go over and join the Goodreads group. We'll be having lots of chats about this. Let us know if you put a TBR up. I'll be keeping an eye on YouTube over the next few weeks to see what people are putting up in terms of their Victoba TBRs and I'm just very very excited for Victoba again this year. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.